Welcome to the first Guided Notes presentation about the circulatory system. Today we'll be completing the first half of the Guided Notes titled The Circulatory System. If you don't have them out, please pause the video and get them out now. The circulatory system only has one job, and that's to move materials, such as nutrients and cell wastes, through the body. Nutrients are things like oxygen carried by red blood cells, glucose, amino acids, lipids, cholesterol, minerals, vitamins. Waste products are materials like water, urea, carbon dioxide, and lactic acid. The next section to look at is directly under the function. The circulatory system, based on how blood and blood components move through the body, is broken into two subsystems. The cardiovascular system moves the blood around the body, and the lymphatic system returns lymph to the cardiovascular system. Lymph is a liquid that is part of the blood's plasma and carries nutrients outside the blood vessels. The cardiovascular system has three main parts. The heart, which gives the initial push of blood, the blood vessels, which carry the blood throughout the body, and the blood itself, which is the medium of transportation for most substances in the body. There are three types of blood vessels, arteries, capillaries, and veins. Arteries take blood away from the heart. Arteries are the blood vessels carrying the blood to the body as the heart beats. Because of the pumping of the heart, arteries carry blood under high pressure. Arteries branch down into smaller and smaller vessels until the blood reaches the capillaries. Capillaries are the smallest of blood vessels, typically only half of a millimeter in length. Capillaries are so narrow that red blood cells have to travel through them in single file. A bundle of 50 capillaries would be thinner than a human hair. The capillaries are made of a single layer of cells, which allows the blood to exchange nutrients and wastes with the body cells. Once the exchange of materials has occurred at the capillary and cell level, the blood needs to be returned to the heart to be sent out again. This is the job of the veins. Because of how much <clears throat> blood slows down traveling through the tiny capillaries, the pressure in veins is low. Veins need the help of the skeletal muscles contracting to help move blood. Many veins run th deep through skeletal muscles and the contracting of these muscles squeeze the veins and the blood in the veins. Veins also contain valves that keep the blood flowing toward the heart. Many of your veins have to slowly move blood against the force of gravity. Without these valves in the veins, blood would have a di very difficult time ever making it back to your heart when you're standing up. Here's a diagram showing the structural differences between arteries, capillaries, and veins. The color of the vessels is to indicate the concentration of oxygen in the blood red being high concentration, blue being low concentration, and purple for where the oxygen concentration changes. Your vessels are not actually these colors. Let's take a quick look at your heart diagram and the chambers of the heart. Here's a color version similar to yours. Keep in mind that whenever you're looking at diagrams of organs, left and right are opposite of yours. It's as if you were looking at the organ of someone in front of you. The right side, on the left, is receiving blood from the body, low in oxygen, and sending it to the lungs. The top chamber, labeled A, is the right atrium. Blood flows from the right atrium to the right ventricle. The right ventricle contracts and pumps the blood out to the lungs. The blood picks up oxygen in the lungs and comes back to the heart on the left side of the heart to the left side of the heart, which is your right. The oxygen-rich blood enters the heart through the left atrium. The blood is then released into the left ventricle, which pumps the blood out of the heart and to the body through a large artery called the aorta, this vessel right here.
As we mentioned on the last slide, blood flows to the lungs and to the body, each from a different side of the heart. Let's trace the route of blood around the body. We're going to start at the main veins returning oxygen poor blood, blue, to the heart. This is the vena cava. From, the, from there, the blood flows into the right atrium. The right atrium dumps the blood into the right ventricle. The right ventricle pumps the blood out into the pulmonic circuit. The path of blood through the lungs to get rid of carbon dioxide and pick up oxygen. The blood travels through the pulmonary arteries to each lung, travels through the capillaries in the lungs, getting oxygen and getting rid of carbon dioxide, and then returns to the heart through the pulmonary veins. The blood then enters the left atrium into the left ventricle, then pumped out of the body into the systemic loop through the aorta. The arteries branch off small, smaller and smaller all over the body until the blood enters the capillaries in the body. The capillaries help give oxygen to and pick up carbon dioxide from the body cells and then return blood back to the heart, the body's veins, th through the body's veins into the vena cava and back through the double loop again. This concludes part one of the circulatory system. Part two will be the back of the same guided notes covering the blood and the lymphatic system. We'll see you in class.